The catalyst really is, comes in two uh, forms. One is the public health question of diabetes and heart disease and how we manage it, how we identify it, and how we can prevent complications uh, of diabetes and heart disease. The second is really to educate our colleagues because our colleagues are the ones who are interfacing with the patients and really making the impact on the grassroots level. In Canada currently, I think the most important issues, number one is that it is an epidemic. It's not an emerging epidemic, but in fact an epidemic uh, whereby we have over two million individuals with diabetes and probably another two million or more who have pre-diabetes. And so if that pre-diabetes continues to accrue and become and convert to diabetes, we'll have really a true public health dilemma. The second thing is that diabetes care is very fragmented in Canada where blood sugar and all of the main diabetes care is provided by diabetologists and primary care docs. But in fact, it's the other doctors who are part of the care of these patients who feel disjointed. And I think it also goes in the other direction where the diabetes community feels disjointed from the cardiovascular and vascular community. So it's bringing people together that I think is a challenge. We hope that our attendees leave with uh, a more comprehensive understanding of the dilemma, how we can identify complications and how we can manage them. I hope that people will know that when they have a patient with a diabetic complication, that they know who to turn to and that other disciplines, whether they be cardiologists, dietitians, physiotherapists, and others, will be there to care for their patients. And I think that's what we really want to talk about is coordinated care, which is one of the themes of the Peter Monk Cardiac Center. Uh, these patients with diabetes really are so different from other patients. They may have the same disease processes, coronary disease, peripheral vascular disease. They may have issues of uh, renal dysfunction as well. But diabetics are really managed in a different way. And that's because they've already gone through so many uh, of the um, thresholds for which we care for patients. We try to get involved in their care very early on and then be more intensive as their disease progresses, whether it be kidney disease or heart disease. Diabetes is complex because it involves blood vessels across the entire body. So therefore, almost every organ of the body can be affected. That's number one. Number two, it's a process that's very aggressive and one that occurs sometimes asymptomatically. So patients can progress rapidly without any clinical manifestations. And by the time clinical manifestations emerge, patients may be too far down the road. Thirdly, and probably uh, maybe most significantly, it's very much tied to multiple risk factors. Not only cholesterol and blood pressure, but also clotting and thrombosis. And those are also factors that make these patients at risk for an acute event. Not only the chronic disease, but also an acute disease on top of the chronic disease. So an epidemic not only deals with the prevalence of a disease, but the patterns of developing the disease. So if you go back 20 years ago, the rates of developing diabetes were less than half of what they are now. There are very few disorders in the history of mankind that have evolved and developed as rapidly as diabetes. So that's why we call it an epidemic. It has to do with the rate of increase in the incidence of the disease. More importantly, because it's a chronic disease, these individuals will be cared for for many, many years. And so we have to develop new strategies in our healthcare system to meet these challenges. There, it's not just, you know, like an infectious disease that we can just treat with an antibiotic and some people will resolve and others won't. In this case, it's, it's going to go on for many, many years and people are developing the disease much younger. So I think it's the rate of increase in the prevalence of the disease and also the declining age of onset of diabetes now into teenage years where we have teenagers uh, being exposed to this, this uh, chronic disorder. Well, we at the Peter Monk Center have, were established a number of years ago with the foundation that we work in a multidisciplinary way to combat 
and prevent cardiovascular disease. Our in institute and our center uh, really uh, compiles people from various disciplines, all the way from cardiology to vascular surgery to interventional radiology to radiology itself and to psychology. And so we believe that we have, at the Peter Monk Center, established the center for the future, which is where the, the greatest and best experts we can uh, accrue get together and talk about our patients and uh, manage these very complex clinical disorders. In this case, it's diabetes and heart disease, but of course at the Peter Monk Center, we're facing many other challenges in heart failure, valvular heart disease, and uh, in advanced imaging. I think it's a disease of our lifestyle meeting genes. So we have genes that set us up from our family and we inherit these. They are inside of us and then the environment triggers the development of the disorder. And so it really has to do with the obesity epidemic is strongly linked to diabetes as is the, uh, the whole idea that we have a sedentary lifestyle. People play on their smartphones and in video games. Kids are not out playing as much as they used to uh, and they're not as active. And I think it also revolves around a psychology um, and one of the things I like to talk about is that, you know, families don't eat dinner together, for example, anymore. People eat on the run, uh, they eat uh, foods that are unhealthy, uh, and they don't have the psychological support that they did before, so people may find uh, solace or some sort of uh, uh, pleasant feeling in, in eating foods that are unhealthy. And I think it's just a, a disease of our lifestyle. It's very un, uh, unusual to have these rates of diabetes in low and middle income countries. Now, have